Good evening, everyone. Let me acknowledge the Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, Honorable Rayburn Blackmore, Minister for National Security and Legal Affairs, other senior government officials, members of the media, and the listening public. As at 5 p.m. yesterday, Dominica has been under Tropical Storm Watch as Tropical Storm Tammy advances towards the Lesser Antilles. We'll first hear from the Honorable Prime Minister, who I'll now invite to address us. Uh, thank you, Daryl. Let me say good evening to all the listeners and viewers uh, to this um, press briefing uh, as we prepare for the approach of the tropical storm. Just to say to you that based on advice from the Met Office and the ODM, um, as of 5 p.m. today, uh, a decision was taken to upgrade um, from a tropical storm watch to a tropical storm warning. So effective 5 p.m. today, we've upgraded uh, to a tropical storm warning and of course the public servants will speak to some of the elements of this um, during the course of the press briefing. Uh, we've also taken a decision to have all shelters open um, from 7 p.m. today. Uh, so shelters across the country are open. Um, all schools will be closed tomorrow. So all schools on the island will be closed tomorrow. Um, tomorrow will be a working day for both the private and public sector workers, which means every working person you have work tomorrow, including the NEP. Um, and, and so we will have work tomorrow. Um, I just want to say to us that um, recent memory will remind us of the need for us not to take this approaching storm for granted. I know that the majority of us have access to various medium where we um, receive information on the, well, on the weather and the approaching storm, and that is fine. But in terms of our national preparation, it's absolutely important that we take note of our local Met Office and the Office of Disaster Management, and in, in this case also the National Emergency Planning Organization for um, official information and um, some of the preparatory actions we're going to take. As you know, I, I, I was in, um, in, in Canada attending the CARICOM Canada Summit, and I cut my stay short. I came in this afternoon, and I went straight from the airport into a National Emergency Planning Organization meeting, which started at 3.30 uh, today, where I met with the, the chair, chair, chairpersons of the various uh, committees within NEPO, uh, all of whom um, gave a report and an update on the actions that they've taken at the various committee levels um, in an effort to prepare the country um, for um, any eventuality. Um, we are not taking anything for granted. We are um, cross-checking every element of our preparation uh, to ensure that no stones are left unturned in respect to our preparation and protecting the country um, from the ravages of, of the storm if it were to affect us. It's important that while we do these things at a national level, that we take uh, cognizance of our own individual responsibility, our responsibility at the family level and, and at the community level. And it's important that we, we, we look at our surroundings, our homes, and prepare ourselves um, for the storm. Please do not take it lightly. I am not taking it lightly. Um, we all, we all too, we're all too familiar with the impacts of tropical storms on us. We saw what happened with Philip a couple of weeks ago um, with, some, with some showers. And um, of course, the Met Office will tell you um, how many inches of rain we expect to get um, from this storm. And, 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 and so let us take precaution. Um, let us take the instructions and the advice from, the, um, from NEPO and from the ODM on some of the things that we need to do. Um, for the shelters, we'll ensure that um, that the, 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 the staff there to receive you and to look over you while you are a resident at the shelters during this during the storm. Um, we are seeking we're increasing the staff at the various um, national um, emergency shelters in 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 Cassie Bruce in in um, in Jimmit and in um, 
Layu, so we're increasing the staff complement there. Um, we'll be deploying um, public officers in those localities to, to help with, with management and, and logistical um, issues um, to ensure that those of us who will have to go to the shelters, we, um, we, we, we are prepared and, and we will be received nicely there. Again, um, let us use the time that we have before we start being impacted by the storm to do our cross-checking. Do not leave things for when the storm comes, or do not say that it's not going to come. We saw the destruction that Tropical Storm Erica did on our country. Erica did on our country. Um, and we saw the destruction that Maria, Maria moved from a Category 2 to Category 5 in 36 minutes. 36 minutes, record. And so we're not taking it for granted. The reality is, my friends, the impact of climate change is real. And this is one of the major issues that we raise with the Prime Minister of Canada. And that's the main issue that we raise if all um, heads of state and heads of government we meet and we engage as a Caribbean community. Because this is the greatest threat to our existence in the Caribbean, the impacts of climate change. And, and, and so as we focus our attention on the, on the approach of, of Tropical Storm Tammy, um, let us do our household preparation, our individual preparation. As I said, the government will do everything that we have to do. And I've given the, the go ahead for us to take all the necessary precautionary measures and also ensure that if we have to respond, we have systems in place to respond. I can say to you, um, in receiving the reports from the Ministry of Health, the National Security, the fire and ambulance, um, the availability of food and water in Dominica, from, from what we also heard from Duasco and, and the preparation for, for the storm. Um, we, we heard from the um, chairman of the shelters, and he will speak um, soon and, and to give you an update on where we are with the shelters. Um, um, and of course, with the several homes that we've built, um, we've seen less people wanting to go to the shelters or for obvious reasons, and, 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 and this is good. But let us focus our attention on this preparation. Um, for me, as, as your Prime Minister, this is my major preoccupation. Um, my major preoccupation. So we can do two things. We can only do two things. Prepare and pray. We can only pray and not prepare because we'll be a foolish virgin. And we have to prepare and pray. And in the process, take advice from NIPO, the Met Office, and from the ODM. And so um, just to reiterate, um, as of 5 p.m. today, a decision was taken to upgrade our um, situation from a tropical storm watch to a tropical storm warning. Um, shelters are opened, have been, have been opened from um, 7 p.m. today. Um, all schools will be closed tomorrow. Um, there'll be work for both the private and public sectors uh, across the country. The airports and the ports will remain open until further um, advice is provided, but all airports, all ports are open in Dominica. Um, we're open, f yes, for business, but we are to prepare in the process. Um, as we go along, as, we, as, as, as is customary, we'll provide you with regular updates. So we'll have an update for you tomorrow. And, and as we go along, we'll provide you with the information that we believe that will, which will help you um, manage your anxieties, manage your fears, but also help you in being focused on what we need to do as individuals, as families, as communities, mm -hmm. and as a nation. Um, and, and so we continue to, to prepare and to cross-check um, for um, the situation. For many of us, this will be a sleepless night as we monitor the situation on, on, a, on, a, on an ongoing basis, an ongoing basis. So I want to, again, um, thank you for your cooperation and collaboration. The country can be as secure and prepared based on how we individually prepare ourselves, okay? And 
if you know that, of course, I'll leave the details to the technical folks to speak about from the ODM on the issue of areas that are prone to flooding. If you're living next to a ravine or a river and you've had flooding in the past, you're going to have to be somebody who would have to relocate um, um, for this storm. And of course, I will, I'll leave those details um, to my friends who will speak after me. But again, um, <coughs> we, uh, this is a major preoccupation. Um, and so please, I beseech every one of us in this country um, to not take this lightly and to prepare, do our own preparations, and to, and to look out for our neighbors, especially um, the, the, the senior citizens. We need to ensure that, that, that they are okay and they, they are safe at their homes. If they're not safe at their homes, then we would have to facilitate them to get uh, to, to the shelters and so on. So I said we'll try to provide you with um, information on an ongoing basis. Whatever information we have, we pass on to you so that it can assist you in, in better managing your anxiety and also helping you in your preparation. Thank you. Our thanks to the Honorable Prime Minister. And as you heard, we are now under tropical storm warning as at 5 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, we'll now invite uh, Mr. Itoma James, the acting senior met officer, who will give us more details as to the current trajectory of tropical storm Tammy. Good evening, everyone. I um, just want to acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Prime Minister and the Minister for National Security, also the Cabinet Secretary and all the other PSs present. So firstly, let me start by saying that as of 5 p.m. today, Dominica was placed under a tropical storm warning. And a tropical storm warning means that we expect tropical storm conditions within the area within the next 24, uh, 36 to 24 hours. So this means that we expect the general public to, if you have not already activated your emergency plans, you should do so now and just be prepared for what is to come. At 5 p.m., the center of tropical storm Tami was located about 13.7 degrees north and longitude 56.6 degrees west. This places it about 336 miles east-southeast of Dominica. Tami is now moving at about 13 miles per hour to the west-northwest. There are sustained wind speeds of up to 60 miles per hour, and the wind speeds extend outward up to about 125 miles from the center. On its current path, Tami is expected to pass anywhere between 50 and 90 miles east of Dominica. With that in mind, we need to take into consideration that we can expect some tropical storm winds at some points during tomorrow. Um, additionally, we expect the tropical storm force winds to start or give us some impacts from anywhere from after 8 a.m. tomorrow, and this could continue into Saturday early morning. The rainfalls associated with tropical storm Tami is expected to be up to four to six inches, and this could be greater in higher elevations. And like we know, Dominica is a very mountainous country, so we can expect some greater accumulations of rainfall. For the fisher folks, we expect sea conditions to start deteriorating before the onset of tropical storm, and we can see some deterioration in sea conditions from about from tonight from late tonight and sea swells going up to about three meters and we expect the wave heights to peak anywhere for about four meters from tomorrow well up until friday night so just to reiterate we are under a tropical storm warning and that means that tropical storm conditions are possible or are expected within the area, and we expect Dominicans, the general public, to prepare and have your 
hurricane plans activated and ready for whatever comes our way. I just want to say thank you for your time and the Met Office will continue keeping you updated. You can visit our website at weather.gov.dm for any further updates. Thank you, Mr. James. Mr. Fitzroy Pascal is the National Disaster Preparedness Coordinator, and I'll now invite him to address us. Good evening to the listening and viewing public. At 5 p.m. this evening, Dominica was placed on the tropical storm warning as Tropical Storm Tammy approaches the Lesser Antilles, including Dominica. A Tropical Storm warning means that conditions, Tropical Storm conditions, are expected somewhere within the warning area within 36 hours. Note well that information regarding the progressive development of Tammy has been in circulation by the National Disaster Management System for several days. This means that by now, all preparedness actions by the public, including the business community, should have been completed and plans ready for activation. By now, emergency kits should have been already packed with the necessary supplies. The National Emergency Operations Center, or the NEOC, has been activated as of 5 p.m. this evening. The emergency services and first responders are activated. As is customary, heavy equipment will be prepositioned to ensure limited downtime, continued access, and ease of mobility. During the passage of Tami, the public should be on alert as the usual hazards of heavy rains, gusty winds, up to tropical storm strength, flash flooding, landslides, and rough seas are expected. People living near rivers, Ravines and other waterways are reminded to be on alert during heavy rains and be ready to move to safety as required. All should take the time to ensure that waterways are cleared to reduce flood impact. Importantly, the ODM strongly discourages walking, swimming, or driving through flood waters. Additionally, mariners and fisher folks by now should have secured fishing vessels and other equipment until further guidance is provided. People who live along coastlines should be on alert for rough seas and storm surge that may threaten and be ready to move to a safe area. Shelter activation will be addressed by the local government commissioner. While the ODM and the broader NEPO, the National Emergency Planning Organization, are in a state of readiness we continue to implore that the public should also do their part to reduce impacts on their lives and livelihood. Again, please listen to official sources for updates and further guidance during the next 48 hours. Information is available on both websites of the ODM and the Dominica Meteorological Service to learn more about storm impacts and what actions to take during floods and landslides. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fitzroy Pascal. Again, we are under tropical storm warning as at 5 p.m. this afternoon, and all shelters are open. Once there is talk of any pending weather conditions, people are concerned about shelters, and I'll now invite the chairman of the Shelters Committee, the local government commissioner, Mr. Glenroy Tuse, to address us. Let me say a very pleasant good evening to the listening and viewing public. As has been indicated, shelters were opened or activated as of 7 p.m. this evening. We have made available 101 emergency shelters for the general public. 
However, we've made some arrangements, and I want to outline those arrangements we've made for particular communities in Dominica. So at the regional shelter in Casibrus, this shelter will serve the communities of Good Hope, Petit Soufrier, San Sauveur, including Casibrus. At the regional shelter in Jimit, the communities will be to be accommodated Maho, Jimit, Masak, Kinfield, Taru, Layupak Sultan, and Campbell Despoir. The Layu Regional Shelter will accommodate persons from the, Koli, the community of Koliho. And I just want to add additionally that residents of Kulubistri will be accommodated at the Monrachet Richard Center, the residents of Miro at the John Caleb Lora Primary School in St. Joseph, and of course we have the residents from Bourne who will be accommodated at both the Portsmouth Secondary School and the Dodan Primary School. I just want to encourage everyone to be mindful of their responsibilities as have been indicated, and we're encouraging those of you who should have been at the shelter already, or were planning to be at the shelter, please, we're encouraging you to come with some of your supplies. And the basic supplies we're referring to some water to, to last at least 26 to 36 to 48 hours. Um, some dry foods, we're talking about biscuits and canned foods. Very importantly, your medication. We know there are people who want prescription medi medication, and we're encouraging people to work with that medication. Of course, very importantly, people consider their belongings and the documents. You put that in a safe plastic bag and you, you, you take it to the shelter. Um, we will, as, as a customary, we will enforce our shelter rules. There are shelter rules and regulation, and so we're talking of no weapons, no knife, cutlasses, guns, or anything of that nature. We expect, as the Prime Minister indicating, that people should be praying, so we're asking and encouraging each other to be each other's brother, each other's keeper, um, we know we have some senior citizens who don't, are not so in tune with the noise. So we're asking people to lower the level of noise and just importantly be each other's brother, each other's keeper. That is significant. Um, and so we want to encourage people to go to the shelters. Should have been there, but do that as soon as possible. Do not wait until the, the rain bans and the, the, the stormy weather and the winds to begin to approach the shelters and create that sort of chaotic condition. We are not calling for that. We are calling for tranquility. We are calling for togetherness. We are calling for unity. We are all in this thing together. It's our responsibility to ensure that each other is safe in a safe environment. And so we are just encouraging and asking everyone, once you're in the shelter, please adhere to the rules shelter rules and regulations, and let's all ride the storm comfortably, and let's all be safe in a safe environment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Glenroy Tuse. Honorable Raven Blackmore is the Minister of National Security. He's also here with us, but we'll now invite questions from the media, uh, starting, of course, with Curtis Matthew. Thank you very much, Mr. Darren Seed. Um, I noticed that uh, employees have been asked to work tomorrow. You know, yes, yes, employees have been asked to work tomorrow. I also heard the weather forecaster indicating that activity from the storm should begin by tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. I just wanted an explanation on what basis do we now ask employees to be on the job for the entire day tomorrow. Thank you very much, Mr. T. If I have the opportunity, I'll come back again. <laughs> uh, Prime Minister. Well, <coughs> as we say, we, we, we keep monitoring the situation. Um, we, we take decisions based on, on, on advice and, and what we expect at any, any particular period of time in respect to um, when this storm will start affecting us in any significant way. Um, we will keep on monitoring tonight. Um, if there is a view that we should call off work tomorrow, then we will make that decision. But as of now, um, we're not in a position to say, well, there's no work tomorrow. The other thing, too, is that um, 
we have to also be um, practical in this, that there are um, businesses, even including the, the public service, who will require staff to come in to, to also organize and to um, help with the, the preparation of those businesses um, for, for the storm. But if, if um, the situation warrants us to um, call off work tomorrow, then we shall do so. Um, so we're not in any deliberate way saying to we'll come to work just to come to work. Um, um, we will keep monitoring and, of course, based on the advice, and um, I, I will take the appropriate um, action. Um, but in order to minimize uh, the number of people who will be traversing across the country, we figure, let us keep the most vulnerable home, children. Uh, so this is why we always take a decision to keep children home. Um, so that we don't have the situation of, of, of um, the vulnerable kids, children are out uh, and so forth. So, and of course we're informing them early enough so that their parents can make the necessary arrangements for them. But, but, but rest assured, um, we're not taking a decision just to say you must come to work. Um, no, uh, we'll keep monitoring. This, is, this was as of um, 5 p.m. Um, today. Obviously the Met Office and the ODM and others will keep monitoring and, and provide advice almost every two hours, you know, uh, every hour. Uh, so it, we, we've been in regular contact so and so on. Um, sure. Our, our hope is that um, the the uh, the tropical storm will move further away from Dominica. That's, what, that's our hope. That's our prayer. Um, that's it. That, that's what we're hoping for. Uh, that's what we're praying for. Um, but we're also preparing um, in, the, in the event that it will to affect us as we currently anticipate it will. Um, so we keep hoping that it can move away from us, um, but, but we prepare nonetheless. But, but certainly we will keep monitoring uh, on a regular basis as we've done in the past. And um, if there's need for us to see everybody should stay home tomorrow, then we shall take a decision. Um, our preoccupation in all of this always is to protect lives first, livelihoods and property second, but first, and foremost is to protect lives and ensure that everybody is alive and, and, and um, after the storm. Okay. Thanks to the Honorable Prime Minister and other presenters this evening. We encourage everyone to stay tuned for updated information as it becomes available. Do have a good evening and stay safe. But uh, before, before we wrap up completely, Honorable Rayburn Blackmore will we'll give a few remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let me recognize in our presence the Honorable Prime Minister. And the fact that the Prime Minister was scattered to return home on Saturday, of the, uh, um, came back today in light of the, um, of the storm that is threatening us, speaks volumes to his leadership and commitment to serving the people of Dominica. I think the Prime Minister has actually crystallized everything um, nicely, but I just want to say further that over the years, um, we have done a lot to improve our infrastructure in so far as disaster mitigation and, and preparedness and response are concerned. And throughout the year, we have been planning training programs for the communities for the instrumentality of ODM and of course the Met Office, working in concert with um, the local government um, um, department. Of course, you heard just now from the, the chairman of the Shelters Committee. When you have a, a potential disaster situation on the horizon, the most you can do is to prepare for the worst case scenario and to hope for the best, as well from the Prime Minister. And that we are doing, I, I feel comforted this year that we have seen an improvement in, in, in reporting system and our readiness is, is much much in, improved to what are previously obtained. And I think what is left to be seen if the response becomes a necessity is to see how quickly we can put into effect what we have been doing over the years. And I'm confident that will happen. I just want to say further that um, the police um, has ensured that all officers have been recalled from rest days and to ensure that they can respond appropriately. Likewise, the fire department. So all the agencies within the um, response mechanism are actually fully motivated, fully ready. And of course, as you heard from the Prime Minister, the most we can do is to provide the infrastructure, to provide the personnel, and to provide the other enabling infrastructure 
but the rest reside within us as individuals to, to respond and to respond appropriately. But fundamentally, one thing that we experienced the last time when the shelters were open, that people were kind of reluctant to go to the respective shelters. I think, especially people who are living in vulnerable areas, it's important that you move to the shelters as early as possible to avert the potential of any disaster of injury to yourself. As well from the Prime Minister, fundamentally, our preoccupation is to protect lives. And then you, as an individual, has a responsibility to your own safety and security. So the shelters are open, they're well equipped, and what, left to be, what is left to be done is for you to ensure that you, you, that you respond early enough. One of the things that we are doing this year uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, is to augment our staff complement, especially within the fire department in areas like Cassie Bruce and in La Plain and in Granby, and to, to help with any potential rescue that has to be done. And I think ensuring that we have, we have the assets um, ideally located in areas that are vulnerable is also key to our success in responding to any um, eventual or possible eventuality as a result of the impact of the storm. So let us continue to work hard. You can pray, but you must work towards achieving that prayer. And I, I, I don't think it makes sense if you know you live in a vulnerable area next to a river that has shown over the, over the past years and weeks, as we experienced a couple of weeks ago, to, to overflow in banks, for you to stay there and to pray to God for nothing to happen to you. I believe God loves people who love themselves also and to, and to act appropriately. So let us pray for the best and let us continue to do what we have to do from us, from the home setting firstly, the community and from a, from, 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 from a national standpoint. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Honorable Rayburn Blackmore. Again, thanks to Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt and the other presenters this evening. Our fisher folk, you still have time to take in your boats, farmers, to ensure your livestock is moved to higher ground. Ensure all your documents are properly secured, your family is safe. You still have time to do so. As you heard us at 5 p.m. this afternoon, we are now under tropical storm warning. Schools will be closed tomorrow, and any further updates as to any other decision taken by government will be relayed to you. The state is in its own preparedness. It's up to you for your personal preparedness as we move forward. Do have a good evening, everyone, and stay safe. Sorry. Yes, I yes, good. It's before, yes. Yeah, I just wanted to find out, has any decision been taken re uh, activities for independence, heritage day, and all these cultural activities? Today, Thursday, <laughs> can you give us a sort of hint as to whether you're planning to at least uh, not have these activities or these activities are going ahead? Yeah, well, good question. Uh, we, that was also discussed at the, it was raised rather at the, at the, National Emergency Planning Organization meeting this, this afternoon. Um, our position is that um, we will um, we will take things in stride, in strides, um, and we will make a determination as time goes by um, on some of the weekend activities. Um, but certainly um, for tomorrow, we would we would have um, called off all, all national activities. Um, there was supposed to be um, the, the national awards for f agriculture, and this was um, called off, and, and the other activities um, from national government standpoint. But in terms of Saturday, we've marked a difference. Uh, we will make a de determination right tomorrow on this, and uh, of course we have Heritage Day in Woodfordale on on Sunday. So we will see how how it goes, and then on advice, uh, the appropriate actions will be taken. Um, but rest assured, you know, as always, we we always put people first and people's safety first in this matter. So whatever actions we have to take at the appropriate time, uh, we will not hesitate to take those actions and so on. Um, but we have to take it in strides, in steps, and, 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 and based on the advice coming from the Met Office and from the ODM, um, we will be, we'll make some determinations on this. But just to reiterate, as everyone has done, we cannot keep saying it. Um, enough that we have to prepare ourselves and at the family level, at the community level. Okay, we're here to provide guidance, we're here to provide support, we're here to provide advice, we're here to provide encouragement, and we're here, we're here, we're here to help every one of us manage our anxiety 
uh, manage our fear, manage our concerns. Um, um, but at the national level, we're doing everything um, possible and um, to to ensure that the the state is in a is in a position of preparedness and equally important is that we are in a position to respond in the event that we were to be affected god forbid thank you and good night everybody